And it's something um, you mentioned, I think, in another interview uh, that it's it's really never too early to get started because there's a point where it's almost too late when you no know, people are in you know, fourth grade and they're already used to PlayStation and then uh, whatever they, they, they do. Um, so it's really good to start early that they get used to it and they get to get to enjoy it from an early age, right? Yeah. And, you know, I have to say it's, it's interesting because when I started hiking with Mason, I read an article on this parent website in the US that's like, it's babycenter.com and it's still up. But I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe this article is still up. But it's like, absolutely under no circumstances do you hike with a child before six weeks of age. And I'm okay. Like, what? What? Like, too much jostling. You can give them shaken baby syndrome. For okay. Like, again, yeah, yeah. Like, it's so false. Like the very best thing you can do as a new parent literally is put the baby up against your skin and go outside and start walking. Mm. Like that's what you should be doing. I mean, I guess if they're saying like, don't go out on a 10 mile hike to, you know, 12,000 feet elevation mm. because of altitude sickness. Okay. But, but really like it's, it's so healing for a parent to get outside. You know, my husband used to take my son so I could get sleep breaks because he wasn't a great night sleeper, he'd take them in the day and just like strap them on and off they go. And they'd go hiking for hours. You take a bottle and it was awesome. And it was so bonding for them. And it just, they'd come back so happy and mm -hmm. it was great. So I just, I, I really encourage people to start as soon as you feel like you can get outside, even if it's like around your block or just, you know, down to the park and walking around the park. It doesn't yeah. have to be an epic journey. <laughs> um, you've seen thousands of, of people and thousands of families, thousands of young mothers probably over the last few years. Um, what are like the typical challenges for young mothers? Um, I think uh, comparing themselves to others and they'll see like one woman that just started going out hiking at like five days after postpartum with her second kid or, you know, so just not, you know, turn all that off and like, just do what works for you. So mm -hmm. if sitting in your backyard is all that works for you, great, sit in your backyard, you know? Um, so I think that's a challenge. I think also isolation. I think um, it, it, till people find us, they kind of, there is this, this real popular trend in the U.S. to be like lonely mama syndrome. Like you're mm -hmm. alone. There's nobody there. All your friends disappeared. Now you are alone. <laughs> and like, I just think that's, just, I don't like seeing that because I'm just like, no, you know, like there's a lot of community out there. Even if you're an introverted person, I've had so many introverted people tell me they joined Hike It Baby and they loved how as introverted as they were, they could go on a hike and they didn't have to like chit chat or be friendly with people. They could just quietly hike along and, mm -hmm. and just go. And that's, what's nice about hiking is you can kind of be in your own space on the trail, even if you're with other people and then you're not alone. Um, so that's, I think, that loneliness, that isolation. Um, I think postpartum depression is very real. I think most women suffer from even a little bit of it because you're mm -hmm. losing your identity and you're suddenly have a child attached to you at all times. And especially the first one is the hardest, but mm -hmm. Shannon would tell you, my friend Shannon, she said, she's had, you know, nine kids and she said it was hard. On <laughs> so, <laughs> I, think that's for, I mean, I think it, different people have different postpartum experiences. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think I think also it gives you a lot of confidence to get out and take your child out into nature. It's, it's very confidence building. So I really encourage women to do it, and it's also can be very bonding. Like my husband and I can have the worst fight in the world, and we go out hiking. And we're all getting along. <laughs> yeah, and it's also great exercise. I mean, it's it's a nice way to exercise, especially after you've just given birth. I mean, you can't probably you you're not feeling like going running in the first couple of weeks, but that do, like having a walk and you no know, doing uh, very low low, low uh, how say um, uh, low impact hiking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something you always can do, and that's even good for you. And it gets you know gets everything in place and you know, gets the circulation going again, and then it's it's uh, really good for your well-being if you're a newborn mother the chemistry in your brain i mean it will change your chem your brain chemistry mm. it's been proven it's it, like even a little walk will have it has hours and hours of an effect after you come back to it's not just yeah. like you're getting affected just when you're doing that huffing and puffing and walking it's when you get home just the the chemistry in your brain has changed mm -hmm. 
Um, what I really liked is that you don't exclude anyone really. And there, there's um, like this one mother um, with uh, her son who has a genetic disorder. I think Gavin is his name. And, and uh, she was really afraid of even getting in touch with you guys because you're like, my, my, my son has some you know, development issues due to a brain, um, uh, brain disorder. And, um, but still he, he joined and, uh, no, there's, there's some cute videos out that he really enjoys the time. And then you know, he's, he's walking on this little, uh, I don't know how you call these things. Um, yeah. the walker. Yeah. And, and it's working out perfectly fine. And it's, it's, they're having a great time and it's also great for, for a kid to, to, you know, be in touch with other kids and, um, yeah, we find there's a lot of families with um, kids with disabilities in hiking mm -hmm. because it's a community activity where everyone's going to wait for you. Um, no one's in a hurry to get through a hike. It's not a workout. It's not a let's hammer this hike out. I mean, there are some where people will say, I'm going to be going really fast. So mm -hmm. bring your fast pace on. Um, but really, for the most part, a majority of what we do is really just a focus on bringing kids together. We really mm -hmm. like it when kids have um, differences and disabilities because to normalize that and make it so that my son, well, my sister's son has Down syndrome. And so mm -hmm. my son's grown up with Saki having Down syndrome always. But, um, but for him to also see that other kids have differences from him that not all kids are like him. And actually, as Mason's gotten older, we discovered he has sensory processing disorder, mm -hmm. which is just really common and a lot more common than people think. Like in the past, it would have been when a kid gets in school, they say, oh, that's a bad kid. But really, okay. bad kids often have sensory issues where sound bothers them, smells bother them, lights bother them. Ah, uh, okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. And what's great is in, out in the outdoors, you actually, you don't have that. You, you really... Um, cure that and help that. And so, so it's really great to see kids that um, may not get along in classrooms or at library hours or these things that are like sort of supposed to be for all kids, you know, little fairs or, you know, painting, you know, you go to these little painting things and like my son couldn't do those. He would have like bopped kids on the head and threw in paint. Mm -hmm. But in Hikey Baby, that was like, okay, if you bopped a kid on the head, like we all worked it out. It was like those parents in the outdoors really seem more understanding of rougher play and just more like let the kids work it out more mm -hmm. and let kids um you know or if kids fall down like parents are much more inclined in the outdoors to let kids work it out and like with gavin and um brandy like she said her therapist her physical therapist just kept saying what are you doing like he's mm -hmm. selling so much further than we had expected and it was because he was seeing all these other kids walking and kids would come up and want to borrow his walker yeah. and walk with it. And so it was really cool because that showed Gavin, like it normalized it for Gavin, it normalized it for other kids, and it really encouraged Gavin to walk without a walker. So he just kept pushing his walker aside and giving it to other kids and then walking. Oh, so nice. Okay. It's awesome. I mean, different cities have different examples of that, but we've had a lot of parents with kids with feeding tubes, um, with oxygen that just feel like mm -hmm. so, it's so nice to go out with other families that are going to not look at their kid like they're weird or different, where they feel like maybe out of place in other situations. Okay. Okay. And um, if someone says, "Look, my kid ha no, has certain special needs," um, I guess you also have experience with with uh, no how to how to handle that. And you can give advice and you know what how to how to cater for these special needs that they might have. I mean, yeah. I mean, it really depends branch to branch. Um, but we also mm -hmm. found um, a lot of people with peanut allergies couldn't go to a lot of kids' things because, or like strong, really strong nut allergies couldn't be at things because other kids would have nuts and parents wouldn't respect that in indoor situations it was very mm. dangerous even you know could be life-threatening so it really i mean there's a lot of reasons why outside play for groups of kids works well mm -hmm. um it really allows a lot more families to come together that maybe wouldn't be able to in a lot of situations okay, okay. um what were some of the most memorable events or things that happened in the past few years during this hike so many <laughs> I feel like every day i mean i get what for me, it's just that daily I get an email from someone saying, thank you. You don't know how much this impacted my family. And when I see that, I'm just like, wow, like it's all you guys. It's all the community, but it's really nice to also see that. So that's great. Um, I think the thing that's most memorable is just how many times I've seen over and over, like when the hurricane happened down in, or the yeah, hurricane down in Houston, mm -hmm. when the fires happened in California, 
Um, we had a mom in New Jersey who had a child born early and she was new to the community and everybody just rushed in and like took care of their house and took care of their baby was in the NICU in the, you know, in the emergency care for, for three weeks and they all took care and fed her whole family. Fed oh, wow. dog. So just, we've seen so much of that where, the community acts in a similar way to a church or, you know, an organized fashion where they just come together. And, and I mean, I remember the very first few months we started hiking baby, a woman was on trail talking about how her family was really struggling that month financially. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, yeah, you know, even shopping has been a challenge. Well, another mom went out, gathered a bunch of women and they Mm -hmm. gathered some money and they went and did a huge grocery shopping and brought it and dropped it off at her house. Wow. And like, you just hear that kind of stuff and you're like, Oh my God. And like, that's not that actually that happened in Portland. And I know it's, I've heard it over and over that it's happened in other communities and people coming up with clothing for each other. Um, you know, a family gets a pack stolen, like a frame pack and other family will donate one. I mean, Mm. and brands coming in and helping in that way too. I mean, there's just been so many instances of, of just people helping people. And that's what I love about community is that when you create a strong community, people, really identify with it and they see the impact of just mm. hiking together what it's done and then they feel this love and then they carry it forward and it creates a pay it forward community okay okay um talking about love i'm sorry i have to ask this but i was just curious when i read it um your husband proposed to you on a trail and uh, said in a, way, in a very strange way apparently <laughs> so, <laughs> we, i mean we we had a really we have a really funny on and off relationship uh, you know, I don't think we ever meant to get married and have a kid. And lots of people say that story. Mm-hmm. So, um, we were really different people, but you know, it's really, I mean, he, he sort of nervously proposed to me on trail because I thought he was pregnant uh-huh. <laughs> and we just weren't sure about, you know, what, what our future would be, but it just, it just seemed like it was the right thing to do. And then then that said, it was still really hard the first two years. I always tell people when they're thinking of breaking up in their first two years of Mm -hmm. having a child, go for a hike, work it out. (laughs) Don't do it because the first two years are so hard. It's such Mm -hmm. a, it's a change of who you are. You lose your identity. You're suddenly in a relationship, you know, for Mark and I, it was Mark and I, and now we're in a relationship with this third person. Yeah, and the focus just shifts to that other person there completely. So yeah. different. Um, and it's hard. And then, you know, you just got to keep working at it, working at it. And I'm so happy that we worked through everything and that we, you know, that that my, I think the trail saved my husband and I so many mm. times. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I, you know, and actually every time I hike on that trail where we first decided, like, okay, we're going to get married. Oh my God, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm really doing this. Like it, it also a special place. It's also the very first trail I ever hiked on with Mason mm-hmm. by myself and the very first hike at baby hike they ever did. I mean, it's just sort of this common, it's a very common town trail in the town we lived in. It was nothing. There wasn't an epic view to it. There wasn't like, it was just a common trail that we hiked every day. That was very mm-hmm. familiar. And I love that because that's also the beginning of hike at baby. It was about, you know, the common, I wasn't saying to people, go find an epic waterfall hike with your babies. I was saying, go mm-hmm. find the trails in your town that you can all do together mm-hmm. and that you can create community and create memories on. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sharing. So, um, how often do, do people typically hike when they join an organization? Is it, is it, uh, Every week? Is it a few times per week? Is it totally different? I mean, some cities, like in Portland, at one point when we were really a booming organization in Portland, uh, we had 12 a day sometimes. Wow, okay. Um, but right now, you know, maybe for a week, you know, it just mm. depends. And like it goes through waves too, where we have a really active ambassador who fires up a whole bunch of people and gets them all excited. And then all these people start hiking. Um, so it depends. We have probably around... We at one point did have about 2,500 hikes a month. Lately, we've been around 2,000. It's also mm-hmm. winter, which slows us down. Um, also, a lot of hike groups started after us because they mm-hmm. saw the success of our group and that probably pulled away from some of ours. But again, like I said, we're not trying to be the biggest, most badass. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to like encourage and inspire wherever we go. So if it means another group takes off and has a bigger presence in a community, that's totally, that's awesome. And it's all just getting people outside. So 
um, we just encourage people like to use our calendar and like post because it actually helps us to be able to talk to parks in different cities and say mm -hmm. how many hikes are happening in this park at this time. Um, so we can, we're a record keeper of what's happening across the country for hiking for families. So oh, literally in some parks, like in Portland, um, we noticed after we started doing a ton of hikes there that they, and, and we, I even talked to a park ranger about how we, I wish there was more nursing benches at the beginning mm -hmm. of the park trailhead because I could only get so far on the trail. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the benches were way further in. And then all of a sudden a bench appeared. Okay. Right at the beginning. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So I mean, I don't know for sure that we had that impact, but they knew how many hikes we were doing there and how many new moms were coming. And okay. to have a nursing bench when you're starting is so nice. So you're like, because you're not really like able to hike and nurse and stuff. That comes with time. Okay. So, yeah. So it's a lot, cool. a lot, lots happening out there. <laughs> <laughs> so if I want to get started, if I want to get started, um, what do I do? How do I get in touch with you? And um, how do I find my my group, my 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 chapter, or how do you, how do you call them? Um, we call them branches. And branches, okay, yeah. Branches of a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and we got that early on because it's just it really is a strong. You need that strong root system, and mm -hmm. then those branches to branch off and like really blossom. Mm -hmm. um, and so you go on hikeitbaby.com. You can just post a hike. You don't even need to have a branch in your city to post a hike. It will appear on a calendar, and people can find it. And then you just share that link on your Facebook. Um, you share it with people around you. Uh, you can become an ambassador and start a branch in your city, or you can. Um, uh, you can also just join a branch that exists or you can just post hikes and people will come. Um, mm. it's, you know, not every area, like I live in Southern Utah, which is really remote. I mean, there's a mm. lot of little cities. And so we sort of encompass the whole area and it's probably like 10 cities around little cities. Mm. And, you know, and, and it's like maybe an hour drive to some things, maybe an hour and a half. I mean, people still do it. They'll drive like just a long distance mm. to find a community to hike with. Um, the other thing for this area, for example, people will come from out of the city or out of the country, out of the state, like all over and they'll hike with us because they know about our calendar. So mm -hmm. you can use it and travel and go to other cities. Like if you came to America and you were traveling around, you could just go from city to city and find hikes to do through the okay. calendar. Okay. Okay. Um, so you've grown into a really big organization. So you have uh, like how many people that work for you currently uh, in terms of the, the management of the organization? Sure. Yeah, like 13 employees, but then there's like probably over, there's over 600 ambassadors and then those are people that are running their cities there. And then there's people that work, about a hundred people that work on teams that help us manage different aspects. So like training or our trail guide or um, helping with relations with different cities, with grants with grant writing so there's all these different teams and so what's cool about it too is that people that join can also just join and decide to help us on a national level and learn all mm -hmm. the skills so learning blogging learning about newsletters learning about photography um you know how to inspire you know cities to work with cities to work with government we have one woman who actually got elected to a government position Mm -hmm. after she was part of Hike Bay for a couple of years because she was, everybody knew her in the park system because she was always <laughs> the Hike Baby lady in the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she actually got, uh, is now in the park commission and she's just like, I never in a million years would have thought of myself becoming like a politician and like getting elected <laughs> to this. And mm -hmm. she was so excited. And she's like, she's like, I feel like I'm faking it. I go to these meetings with all these grownups and I'm like a politician in the room with them. You know, so it's like, it's really neat to see how um, Hike It Baby can affect people and change their lives and mm -hmm. and give them a different insight to maybe even different careers they want to have because they worked with us and volunteered with us. Okay. So um, with the donations that you get, so it's it's $10 per year to join? Yeah. Ten a year. Uh, it, it really helped. We didn't have it, but you know, I have to say people are a lot more accountable and mm -hmm. they're a lot more likely to show up and they're a lot more likely to submit hikes. And then it helped us have a base to know how many people were really truly involved with us by doing that. Okay, and and that money money is used to to cover expenses and to to pay for the uh, the people who are full time enjoy uh, full time engaged yeah. in the organization and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's also used. Um, I mean, 
we have a $30 one that people can pay. And then that helps us bring more people and create programming to get more people out onto trail and reach out more to people. Um, we have a $100 lifetime membership that you pay one time and it's all for your whole life. Um, the branch ambassador fee is $50, but then it's like sort of sliding scale too. We understand that not everybody has that. And, you know, if you really are passionate and you want to get involved, there's so many ways to get involved in volunteer time. Um, and the branch ambassador fee goes to training. We have a pretty comprehensive training program online and technology and all that. So the technology is a, it's a huge piece that I, I think a lot of people are just like, Oh, we'll just have a Facebook page. Well, Facebook can shut down tomorrow. Like you don't own Facebook. You don't run Facebook. Sure. And they change mm-hmm. things all the time. And people are like, well, I'm not getting notifications about anything anymore. And it's like, that was Facebook. We didn't do that. And so um, it's really important to us that people realize that a website is another piece. Like Facebook is an awesome communication tool. Mm-hmm. Our newsletter is great. But our website is also something that ties us together across the whole country and shows mm-hmm. you where you can go do things and people you can connect with everywhere. Okay. Okay. And then how do you keep control over the 300 groups? Is that just there, like, do you yeah. check on them every now and then or how, do, how does it work? I mean, I was just wondering. They have the ambassadors. We ask uh-huh. them to be accountable and be responsible for their groups. Um, you know, occasionally we've had groups go kind of crazy rogue-ish, I guess, but for the most part, no. I mean, if you just say, this is the expectation, this is our mission, this is our vision, this is our values. If we share those, then great, let's, let's mm-hmm. make this group happen. Um, we've never had to like shut a group down or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um, I think because at the core of what we're doing, we're just hiking. We're not like, you know, it's, it's, I, it might be different if we were an organization that was really dealing with, you know, Red Cross or something like that, but this is just hiking. And so really mm-hmm. it's all with good heart and good intention. And I think even when there's um, disagreements within the organization, everyone's really at the end of the day, just out there to, to support other people getting outside, support themselves um, and create mm. community. And so I think that keeps it really, so it does stay a really nice, uh, happy, friendly community and, and brings in really good people. I mean, I, I'm blown away by the volunteers. They're incredible mm. and they dedicate so much time to getting people out in their community and getting people hiking and, and outside. And it makes, it makes a difference. I mean, I've had so many people say, Oh my God, people come up to me in the store and say, Oh, you're the hiking baby lady. And and it makes them feel so good to know that's how their community sees them. It's a great way to be seen like that. You're doing something healthy for your community like that. Okay. Sunshine and burns away clouds like they never were.